How to make a grilled cheese sandwich with roasted bell pepper soup. It's soup and sandwich day here at Rain's Kitchen and Garden. Today I'm sharing my best grilled cheddar cheese sandwich recipe and I'm making it in my pan on top of the stove. I'm also going to show you an easy roasted bell pepper soup made with red and orange peppers and fresh tomatoes. Let's start with the soup. Here are the ingredients that you'll need. You'll need three bell peppers. You can choose any color that you like six fresh tomatoes, one yellow onion, three cloves of garlic. You'll need some olive oil. I've got about two tablespoons of light tasting olive oil here. You'll need some salt, four cups of broth. That's about a liter and I'm using vegetable broth today. Five basil leaves and if you have extra for garnish, keep those handy. You'll also need some oregano. I have a quarter teaspoon of powdered oregano here. And if you don't have powdered oregano, you can use dried oregano, about a half a teaspoon. Before I start with my tomatoes, I wanted to mention that I preheated my oven to 375 Fahrenheit. That's 190 Celsius or gas mark five. And I have a pot of boiling water standing by. So the first thing we need to do to prepare our tomatoes is to score them. And all you need to do is take a sharp knife and just score an X on the bottom of each tomato. Just like that, very, very easy. And now they're scored, they're ready for the pot. After you've scored your tomatoes, you want to dip them in boiling water for about 30 seconds or less. Don't go over the 30 second mark because you might stew your tomatoes. When you start to see the skin breaking on the tomato, they're ready to take out. Now that my tomatoes are done, I can take the skins off. Now you might want to give this a couple of minutes to make sure that it's not too hot for you. I'm wearing my gloves to keep my hands safe, but also because it's a bit of a messy job. <laughs> but this is all you have to do. You see how easy it is? Very, very easy to do. So I'm gonna do that for all six of my tomatoes. Now I'm going to chop and de-seed the tomatoes. How about I take a big one to show you here. I usually chop them in four. One, two, three, four. And that way I get the core out and I'm just gonna discard that into my compost pile. And what I do is I just simply push the seeds out like that. Try to get as many as you can. This is optional. I just find when I have seeds in my soups or in my sauces or juices that it, it gives it a bit of a bitter taste and I don't really like that. So I try to remove all of them, core and seed and chop. That's what we're doing. <laughs> and I just have a bowl here that I'm putting all of my veggies in. So I'm gonna do this with all of my tomatoes now. Now I'm going to chop up and de-seed my peppers. I'll show you how I do that. I'll start with the orange one because it'll be easier to see. The way I do it is I chop the top off and then I just put this in my compost pile. And I'll just show you here. It's so easy, you just pull out the seeds like this and give them a tap and most of them will come out. That's the easiest way to do it. There we go, de-seeded. So I'm gonna do that with all three of my peppers. I 
I hate wasting the top like that, but it's very difficult to peel. Like I said, I peel my vegetables. Did I say that? <laughs> well, I'm saying it now. I peel my vegetables because I have a hard time digesting the uh, skins on vegetables. Don't know why, maybe it has to do with pesticides or I'm not sure. It wasn't like that when I was a kid. <laughs> maybe it's just age. I don't know. I'm just gonna do this off camera here just because it's easier and it'll go more quickly. Okay. One little seed there. There's a few in here. Now, peeling a pepper is not easy, but I'm gonna show you how I do it, the easiest way that I've found how to do it. And again, I'll start with the orange one because it's easier to see. I cut them in half and then I quarter them. And then I peel each one. I know this may sound like a lot of work, but this is completely optional. You don't have to peel your peppers, but I do. Otherwise I won't be able to eat the soup or I'll have tummy troubles if I eat it. Took me a while to figure that out, <laughs> that it was the peels that were doing me in. And I'm gonna put those right into my bowl, just as is. I actually went on an, oh, a year long elimination diet back in, I think it was 2010, to try to figure out what was hurting my digestion. And this was one of the things that I figured out. It was really a rough year. <laughs> because I started off with going on a vegan diet, so no animal products whatsoever. I also cut out sugar and gluten and alcohol, and I have an allergy to soy, so it was very challenging trying to figure out how to get my protein in. But if you have tummy troubles, I recommend a, an elimination diet, definitely. Okay, so that's all I do. And then I'll, sorry for the banging, I'll just put these into my pile that's going into the compost. And I will continue with the other ones. I noticed on the bottom of this pepper, there's a little brown spot down there. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna snip off the ends here. We'll just get rid of that. Oh, sorry about that. We'll get rid of that little brown area. And we can use the rest of the pepper, no problem. Now let's chop up our onion and our garlic. Not doing anything fancy here. I'm just gonna remove the skins first and then just chop my onion into four little pieces. I said just four pieces like this one two three four and then I'm gonna toss those into my bowl as well now we've got the garlic three cloves of garlic now this is how I skin them I just cut the ends off did I get the end yes I did And then I find the easiest, easiest way to loosen the skin is to just squish them. Just crush them down a little bit. I usually give them a whack, but <laughs> I'll save your ears. You see how quickly the skin comes off? Oh, that one's a little, got a little mark on it. We can cut that off. Let's 
it's easy, it just comes right off when you do that. This is old garlic though. I haven't had a chance to harvest my garlic yet, so the skins come off easier. If you have fresh garlic, it's a little tougher to get the skins off. You may be spending quite some time peeling. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there's a little skin here. This little fella doesn't want to come cooperate. There we go. Now let me just take that brown spot off. I'm just cutting each clove in two like that and it's going into the bowl just in two because if the pieces are too small when you're roasting them they could burn. Let me check this one make sure the skin's off. Yep skin's off. I've got my bowl of beautiful vegetables here. Doesn't that look nice? All the reds and the whites together, really nice. So what I'm going to do is I've got my salt and I'm just gonna give that a little bit of salt. I'm probably using a teaspoon, something like that. And I'm gonna take my light tasting olive oil, two tablespoons into the bowl and I'm just gonna stir that up. Cause we're gonna be roasting these into the oven lots of nice olive oil there. I'm going to transfer this into a pan. I just have a well-used roasting pan here. I'm going to pour my vegetables into there. There we go. Put my bowl aside and just kind of even those out. And when my oven beeps, I'm going to put this into the oven for 45 minutes to roast. My vegetables are done. They smell awesome. Look at how beautiful they look. They are starting to brown on the top. Now I'm just going to leave these on the counter and head over to my stove top. In my pot here, I have my four cups of vegetable broth and I've heated that up on medium heat and I'm gonna add all of my roasted vegetables into the pot. I wish I could share how this smells right now. It smells so good. Now I'm gonna add my five pieces of basil, my five basil leaves and that quarter teaspoon of powdered oregano. I'm going to give that a stir and I'm bringing it to a boil. Oh, it smells so good. The colors are so pretty too, aren't they? Very fall-like. So I'm going to bring that to a boil and then turn it down to a simmer for 30 minutes so that all the flavors combine really well. Once it simmers, I'm going to put the lid on top partially to cover it because I don't want it to boil down too much and then leave it for 30 minutes. My soup is done and it smells so delicious. The next thing I want to do is I want to take it off the burner and I'm gonna let that cool a little bit before I blend it. Because if you put hot liquid into a blender, it could explode on you and you could burn yourself. And also, depending on your blender, if you have a plastic blender, the hotter the liquid, the more the odors of the food will kind of infiltrate that plastic. And if you use your blender for fruits and smoothies, you definitely don't want your smoothies to taste like onions and peppers. <laughs> so you want to let that cool a little bit. It doesn't have to be cold when you blend it, but just make sure it's not hot. Or you can use an immersion blender, a stick blender, and do it in the pot. But I'm going to let this cool and I'm going to use my blender to blend it. Now that my soup is all blended, I'm going to pour it back into my pot and keep it on a low heat while I make my grilled cheese sandwich. All you need to make a delicious grilled cheese sandwich is three to four ingredients. First, you'll need your favorite bread, 
I'm using my homemade whole wheat bread today. I'll leave a link in the description below and in the card above for the video on how to make whole wheat bread. You'll also need some butter. I'm using unsalted butter today. I have about maybe one to two tablespoons here. You'll need some cheese. I'm using cheddar cheese today. You can use any kind of cheese that you like. I've used Swiss cheese, mozzarella, goat. I've even used cream cheese. Of course, you could always use good old fashioned American sliced cheese too. That tastes really good. And my secret ingredient, Parmesan cheese. I've got my small pan here on my burner and I've put the burner onto medium so I'm preheating it a little bit. I love this pan. It's perfect for one sandwich or if you want to make one pancake or one little omelette. It's just amazing. I love it. So all that butter that I had before, I'm going to put half in the pan right away. That's about a tablespoon, I'd say. Now I'm going to leave it up to you how much butter you want to use, but honestly, a grilled cheese is a comfort food, so don't skimp out on the butter. I wouldn't say to use a lot, a lot of it, but you want to make sure that you have a nice buttery base here, because you're basically frying your bread, right? So let's wait until that sizzles up. My butter's starting to sizzle a little bit, so what I usually do is I take a little bit of the cheddar cheese and I put that into the pan before I put the bread in because that's going to caramelize and it's going to taste amazing. And at the same time, I'm just using a little pinch of that Parmesan cheese because I want to have that little tang. So now I'll take my bread, my first slice of bread, and that goes right into the pan, pushing that down a little bit. Now be careful, don't burn yourself. And I've got my cheddar cheese here and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of cheddar cheese on the top of my bread here. You might notice that my cheddar cheese is crumbly. That's because I freeze my cheese. I buy it in bulk here in North America. I don't know if they have them elsewhere, but we have a warehouse grocery store called Costco. And I go there once a month and I pick up a whole bunch of cheese and I stick it in the freezer. So when you defrost it, it crumbles like this. You can't use it for slicing, but I'm fine with it being crumbly. <laughs> and I'm loading this up here because I want a really nice cheesy sandwich. And if some falls out into the side of the pan, remember, don't worry about it. It will caramelize. So I'm going to put the top slice on, push that down a little, be careful. Maybe use a spatula instead of your hands. And I'm going to fry that until the bottom becomes a nice medium brown and I'm going to have to check it once in a while to make sure because it's changing. It, it changes every time. It depends on your pan. It depends on the amount of heat you put on it. So just check it once in a while so it doesn't burn. Well, I checked underneath by just kind of lifting the sandwich up a little bit and it's at the color that I like it. And I'm going to show you a very easy way to flip your sandwich. I've got a plate here and I'm just putting a plate on top wear oven mitts if you need to and I'm just flipping that over okay and there's my sandwich I'm just going to put that on the side for now and I'm going to add a little bit more butter just one little pat of butter here let that melt And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little bit of cheddar. Oops, dropped one. It's a little hot. I'm going to turn the burner down a little bit. And then I'm going to add my sandwich back in right on top of that cheddar. I didn't add more parm this time because I just like a little hint of it. And if you find that your bread might be burning a little bit, just turn the heat down because you want to make sure that all the cheese inside melts before your bread starts to burn. So I'm just going to check underneath just to see what it looks like. And if we look underneath, it's a nice brown color. So my grilled cheese is ready.
Well, it's time for lunch. I hope you enjoyed this video, my friends. Leave me a like and a comment. I love reading your comments and I do reply to them. We'll see you next time on Rain's Kitchen and Garden. Thanks for watching. Bye.